some time since I last drove a Scania. So long, in fact, that the last one had three foot pedals. We catch up with Rotorua Forest Haulage's R620 9-axle curtain cider unit in Auckland after it's delivered a load of timber from the Bay of Plenty. First impressions are that it is a good looker. The Roadmaster body and trailer pop with some awesome livery on the curtains, tied into the RFH fleet colours on the cab and with its Peterson lights gleaming as the sun rises. A short ride with regular driver Roger Cross behind the wheel is valuable. He has owned and driven his own trucks and has been driving trucks for many years and he also likes to use the technologies that the trucks like this have in them, which a lot of drivers seem to shy away from. Even without any specific driver training on the technology, he clearly has got his head around it. He lets the truck drive itself through the Auckland morning rush hour traffic using Scania's adaptive cruise control. My drive starts at Lake Carapero on the run to Rotorua. Entry up into the cab is very typical European, with three well-spaced, wide and deep steps, further helped by long grab handles down each side. Once in, the driver's position set up is a breeze, with plenty of room to move around and get comfortable in the air suspension seat. The dash layout looks a little daunting at first glance, more like an aircraft control panel, with lots of buttons and switches, but it doesn't take long to familiarise yourself with the functionalities of it all. The driving position and the controls are once again very European, with everything at your fingertips. If anything, the Scania seems to have more buttons on the steering wheel than other makes. With a row of them along the bottom of the centre of the wheel for cruise control, adaptive cruise following distances and the downhill speed setting controls. On the left you have your entertainment controls and on the right are the digital dash display controls. With AMT, engine brake and retarder controls on the right hand stalk. As usual, on the left stalk are the windscreen wiper and turn indicator controls with the headlight switches on the door along with the rear vision, mirror and window controls. The dash is in the usual wraparound style, while still leaving plenty of room to move around the cab from the driver's seat. The main dash display right in front of the driver is a now common mix of traditional gauges and a centred digital display, which Roger has set to driver performance scores so that he can see how he is driving and being judged live. The central dash section has the entertainment screen and controls at the top, the air conditioning controls below, and further down, more controls for the likes of the diff, cross locks, and the interior lights. Under all of this is a well-designed storage unit for coffee cups, keys, phones, wallets, paperwork, and so on, plus two storage drawers under the rest bench bunk. There's also a fridge and more storage. As I pull out of the mobile at Carapera, the truck and trailer track well with the mirror showing very clearly what's happening. They're good mirrors, but there is also one little problem. On the driver's side, the upper convex mirror is partly obscured by a tinted monsoon shield, rendering it mostly useless, as you can't see much. There are no blind spots though. Getting up to the open road speed limit is a breeze, with the gearbox and the engine working well together. The 620 horsepower engine actually seems non-existent, given the lack of noise in the cab. It's a nice run along the flats to the end of the lake and up over the hill into t -Rail. The 620 barely notices it. All in all, when it's time to hand the truck back to Roger, we're both very happy with the Scania R620. It's got so much horsepower, you don't need to worry about any geographical challenges and so much technology on board that you virtually don't need to worry about driving it. Just set it in cruise control, steer it and let it do its thing.